My name is Daniel Hayes and I'm going to be doing a report on the study School of Thought Epicureanism. Essentially, philosophical schools of thought are important practices set by philosophers throughout time. One particularly interesting philosopher was Epicurus, who lived in Greece from around 341 to 370 BCE. Epicurus, among many other philosophers, created a school of thought that was his own called Epicureanism. In 307 BCE, Athens, Epicurus established the school of thought in hopes to teach others a way of life, among other beliefs. These practices were generally what he called the most good, along with the teachings of not fearing death. In Epicureanism, Epicurus touches on the two points that are relevant today, first being the idea of working to achieve a good. This idea is to propose that all people should strive for pleasure or the good in life. In the collection of Philosophy 101, Paul Kleiman touches on the school of thought, specifically Epicurus' idea of good and bad. Kleiman states, while he agreed that pleasure was the ultimate good, Epicurus believed that the pleasure was attained through tranquility and the reduction of desire instead of immediate gratification. This brings into focus the idea on good or pleasure, how we are to obtain it. The principle was hoping that people would strive to be the best that they could in seeking pleasures over pain in everyday life. His beliefs in this are pertinent in today in the area of instant gratification. Instant gratification is one of the greatest weaknesses that goes against the beliefs of Epicureanism. Morality, argues Epicurus, is within the ideas of pleasure and pain, or good or bad. Epicurus believed that the morality was measurable with the amount of pain or pleasure that results. The measure of morality is one of the largest discussed philosophical inquiries, and Epicurus was conscious of this. Weeks went on with his idea by the philosopher that in order to have a good moral life, one must aim for the pleasures of life, or a pleasurable life. As shown previously, Epicurus taught that to have a moral life, one that is tranquil, they must live for pleasure and the good. To lead a moral life, one was the primary concerns of this philosopher among many others. The ideas taught by the philosophers at the time primarily concerned with all the self and how to become the best. Although Epicureanism discusses this, the philosopher also had ideas with regards to death. Epicurus was able to describe many reasons as to why death should not be feared. Along with the reasons thinking about death keeps us from the ultimate good he so constantly taught. Will Beckingham wrote that Epicurus insisted, This fear is increased by the religious belief that if you incur the wrath of the gods, you will be severely punished in the afterlife. This was the thinker's way of explaining why, at the time, there was so much fear of death. Epicurus saw this and recognized that his fear was leading people to make the wrong decisions. Epicurus saw this and recognized that this fear was leading people to make the wrong decisions in life. His teachings were to bring awareness to the issue and explain exactly how this can be changed. Epicurus believed that this fear was a hindrance and tied those teachings into the idea of a good and bad life. He had disputed this fear of the gods' wrath in his teachings during these highly god-driven times. This new idea of getting away from such beliefs was new. With most things that are new, it was not well received. Will Buckingham stated that in the philosophy book, due to this, he was perceived as being dismissive of religion, which made him unpopular. This ultimately made Epicurus' school of thought somewhat smaller than the other schools of thought. Religious beliefs were so strong at the time that most would not give into these teachings. Epicurus' beliefs about death would be more so considered today, with this open mindfulness that everyone has. With both the idea of death and the good life, Epicurus bridges the gap that not fearing death would truly give the ability of the most good life. In the book Heads Up Philosophy by Marcus Weeks, he does a great job at such a connection. Weeks wrote, he believed that because in death we experience neither pleasure nor pain, it is our duty to maximize pleasure and minimize pain. This greatly showed the idea behind Epicureanism and the teachings proposed. Our life is meant to be lived with these in mind, always pushing for the good that leads to pleasure. If one would practice both these beliefs hand in hand, there is only one possibility of such a good life. The school of Epicureanism was quite different for the early 300 BCEs. With his distancing from the gods and his fearlessness of death, others were wary. The place in which Epicurus did his teachings was the Greek city of Athens, which was a philosophical hub during these times in Europe. Marcus Weeks in his literature also professed, Epicureanism was the first of the ancient Greek philosophy schools to admit women as a rule rather than an exception. Although Athens was among the few cities to allow women to do much of anything, this requirement was very new. To require that women be admitted just the same as men was another reason that many may not have been interested in all of his teachings. Epicurus led a certain lifestyle that one might imagine him having based off of his beliefs that he taught. 
He would not indulge in any activity that would result in the bad or painful life that he so despised. In Philosophy Made Simple by Richard H. Popkin, he describes how Henoism is directly related to the beliefs held by Epicurus. Popkin noted a letter written by Epicurus, I am thrilled with pleasure in the body when I live on bread and water, and I spit on luxurious pleasures, not for their own sake, but because of the inconveniences that follow them. This way of thinking showed that the philosopher was mindful even of his own teachings. This school of thought was one that truly could be practiced today, with less extremes, Epicureanism would be a very positive way to try bringing good and happiness into one's life. Epicurus was on track to creating a better mindset for those who followed. Epicureanism taught many not to fear death and to use this as fuel for leading the good life with pleasure, staying away from desires to rid of the pain in bad life. To say the least, he was trying to make a good life and a happy life, and ultimately to make people stay clear of selfish actions. Thank you.